Good afternoon once again, and welcome to our School of Veterinary Medicine Spring 2018 White Coat Ceremony. I am Dr. Ria St. Louis, proud HDU SVM alumnus. I completed my Doctor of Veterinary Medicine degree and graduated right here in May 2016. I joined our faculty in the Department of Anatomy, Physiology, Pharmacology in January of 2017 as an instructor of anatomy and histology. It is surreal for me to be part of this amazing team of professors who taught me as a student, and I still pinch myself every now and again just to make sure that this is indeed my life. It is. I started studying in January of 2012, and I was not your average vet student. Firstly, I'm a Grenadian, and we account for a really tiny percentage of our vet school population. Secondly, I had no experience in the veterinary field. I'd worked at Scotiabank for six years. Thirdly, I had a nine-month-old little girl. She's in the back, six years old now. <laughs> so I was anything but your average vet student. I was basically a fish out of water. I started on day one not knowing anyone and hardly knowing what was expected of me. I wondered if I'd made the biggest mistake of my life, leaving banking to pursue my lifelong dream of becoming a veterinarian. Just like you did, I began my vet student life with the Professional Attributes Workshop, pause program, and this was my first real encounter with our faculty and some of our upper term students. During those first two days, they made us as incoming vet students feel so very welcome and as though we belonged there. We were part of something great. We were part of the world of veterinary medicine. I knew then that I belonged here. During my three years studying here at St. George's, the vet school faculty administration and staff have shown unwavering support to students. I feel like they cared, like they wanted us to succeed. Our professors always spoke of their open door policy and willingness to aid us as students, even after hours if we needed it. And now as a faculty member myself, I consider it my duty to encourage our students. You are now part of an organization that is set up for you to succeed. You have excellent, accomplished professors who are also just human and very approachable. You will need to work hard and study relentlessly. As I'm sure you already know, veterinary medicine is no easy feat. I was privileged to have my wonderful family right here with me from my white coat ceremony, through my endless nights of studying, all the way to my graduation and even here with me today. I encourage you to utilize the facilities available at SGU for your support. Know that you are not alone and no one expects you to be able to do this by yourself. Traditionally, at the end of our sixth and final term at SGU, before we leave for our clinical year, we have an evening of socializing with faculty members for one last time. It was at this event, and she doesn't know that I'm going to do this, that Dr. Nikki Wise said to me, Rhea, you will make a great veterinarian. She may not know this, but those words stuck with me all the way to Australia during my clinical year at Murdoch University and still resonates with me even now. And if this fish out of water can become a great veterinarian, so can all of you. So, I extend to you the warmest welcome and congratulations on making it thus far. I sincerely hope that you will enjoy your three year stay here with us at SGU. I am so proud to be part of this amazing institution and I'm so honored to be your host for this event. brief history on SGU, our vet school. St. George's University School of Veterinary Medicine aims to offer exceptional opportunities for veterinary education and graduate studies for students from an international community that are comparable to the finest veterinary programs available in the US or elsewhere. To provide professional services to Grenada and other Caribbean locations and to establish a reputation for research and educational excellence in, the areas, in areas of unique opportunity. The St. George's University School of Veterinary Medicine accepted its first class in August 1999 and has accepted two classes each year since then. SGU SVM conducts its first through sixth, sixth term classes on the True Blue campus in Grenada and then students complete their fourth year clinical training in one of 29 affiliated universities in the US UK, Canada, Ireland, or Australia. 2005 marked yet another milestone for the SVM 
when the Society of Phi Zeta, the National Veterinary Honor Society established for veterinary faculty and students, installed its first international chapter at St. George's University. To date, SGUSBM has over 1,000 graduates from all over the world, including the USA, UK, Canada, Sweden, Ireland, Trinidad and Tobago, Grenada, Barbados, Bermuda, Jamaica, Venezuela, Russia, Mexico, Colombia, Japan, Lesotho, Portugal, Germany, Botswana, Pakistan, South Africa, and Israel, who are licensed to practice in 41 states in the US, UK, Canada, and Grenada. In 2011, the, veterinary, sorry, the American Veterinary Medical Association Council on Education, that's the AVMA, announced its full accreditation of the university's Doctor of Veterinary Medicine program for seven years. In October of 2016, the American Animal Hospital Association, or AHA, gave its stamp of approval, accrediting the School of Veterinary Medicine Small Animal Clinic for two years, making it the second practice outside of the United States and Canada to earn this distinction. Given that the seven-year period for which the SVM has accredited, was accredited by the AVMA comes to an end this year, the AVMA will conduct a site visit of the, of the School of Veterinary Medicine in April as part of the accreditation process for SVM, sorry, the re-accreditation process for the SVM. SVM continues to strive toward establishing leading edge veterinary knowledge and technology, expanding its curriculum and adding new state of the art laboratories and classroom. I now take great pleasure in introducing Dr. Joseph W. Childers, Provost of the St. George's University. Good afternoon. Mr. Fromm, Dr. Lewison, Dr. Cott, Dr. St. Louis, President Olds, esteemed colleagues, special guests and family, and mostly students, welcome. I really enjoy speaking to the SVM students. And I thought about what I would say today in talking about this moment in your careers and donning the white coat and the kinds of responsibilities you take on. Uh, and I thought perhaps the best way for me to address this responsibility and, and illustrate the point I want to make today is to tell you a little story. And it's about myself. Um, and you need to know that as we go forward in this story, because I'm going to be talking about something that happened where I grew up, um, my accent is going to get broader and broader. If at any point you can't understand me, just raise your hand. <clears throat> Nothing will happen except I will continue, but at least I'll know. <clears throat> so I grew up in a, in a small rural farming community um, and spent my youth working on farms. And that's how I put myself through my undergraduate. I moved lots of poultry. I moved lots of bales of hay. And my family didn't really have a farm, but we had a little land, and we kept a, a couple of cattle, and we had chickens and rabbits and dogs and cats and the whole thing. And my father, to this day, still keeps a, a couple of calves. And a few years ago, I was home visiting my folks, and my dad told me that... Um, one of the calves had pink eye. Now, my dad is a do-it-yourself kind of guy, so he decided we were gonna doctor this calf. Now, uh, you should know something about my father. There are three ways to do things in the world. The, the right way, the wrong way, and my dad's way. <clears throat> and my dad's way is always going to be the most difficult way. About half the time, it ends in catastrophe. So he had an idea. We were going to do this ourselves, but we didn't have a chute with a stanchion. And I'd done this before, uh, you know, working on farms, and I knew what was involved, and I knew we were going to have to give an injection to this calf 
right here in its eye. And uh, we, didn't have, we didn't have a way to mobilize its head, and I knew that just putting a halter on wasn't going to work. So I asked my dad how he wanted to do this. So his idea was that we would wrestle the calf to the ground, I would body press it while he came at it with the needle. <laughs> Dad's way. <clears throat> so now this calf outweighed me like probably two to one. <clears throat> and... Um, so I said, okay, <laughs> which was probably my first mistake. Uh, so um, we did this, and um, we, we, I got the calf down, and I'm on its neck, and, and uh, of the three of us, uh, the calf is probably the calmest. And, and um, my dad comes at it, uh, and, and he'd never done this before, and he comes in to give the injection, and it landed right there. Um, and after I pulled it out, uh, I said, uh, uh, that didn't work. Uh, and uh, he was very apologetic. And I said, um, so what do you want to do now, Dad? And he said, well, I think we should try again. And I said, you know, I think I'm, I'm pretty protected against pink eye. And, and to be fair, you know, I've never had a problem with it since. Uh, and and uh, I said, you know, um, I've got an idea. Let's call the vet. <clears throat> he goes, that's a good idea. So <clears throat> that's what we did. We called the vet. The vet came. He had the proper equipment. He could mobilize the head. It took him five minutes. No problem. Now, the, the point of this story is partly to make fun of my dad. <clears throat> uh, and, but it's to point out, uh, and if he were here, the story would be a lot longer and a lot more humiliating for him. But, but there were some things I learned from this. Uh, the first one is dads don't change. But the second one is a little more profound. And, and what I realized is that while we were doing this, this calf was, was, was really scared. And we were trying to be gentle with it, but, you know, you can't reason w with a calf when a needle's coming right at its eye. And I recognized after we got through with that that we, we failed. We were trying to treat this calf for a physical ailment, but we failed to be empathetic. We failed in a really important ethical way. And that was a lesson that I've taken with me throughout my life and thinking about how we deal with animals. And uh, as you can tell, I, 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 I love animals and I deal with animals and I, and I want to congratulate you and also underscore to you the fact that when you put on this white coat, you are adopting that ethical challenge. And I also want to congratulate you for taking up that challenge. And I want you to recognize that part of what you do is you speak for, you work for those creatures that can't always speak or communicate what they're feeling, how they're feeling. And the call to you here is to make sure that you never lose your own humanity and reach out and extend that empathy. Don't do what I did. And there will be times, of course, when you are nervous. There are gonna be times when you're scared. I hope you never have your father come at you with a hypodermic. <laughs> but I know, I know that you're all up to this challenge, and, and I want to congratulate you for it. The third thing I learned when you're in a situation like this, call the vet. <laughs> so congratulations once again, and now I want to introduce to you the president of SGU, my mentor, friend, and boss, Dr. Richard Olds. <laughs> Welcome, class of 2022. You know, I, 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 it's going to be a hard act to follow Joe's story. I got to tell you, I have not heard that story before, Joe. Uh, I have a small confession to make. I'm not a veterinarian. But good news, I actually teach in the veterinary school since I'm a parasitologist. And interestingly, I study a disease that uh, affects equally animals and humans, and in fact, a complex life cycle 
involves uh, several animal species as well as the human species. And so as you might imagine, I've become a very strong advocate of the whole concept of One Health since the interrelationship of all the health professions is, is quite significant. And in fact, it's unlikely that we can conquer many of the emerging health problems in our world without a great deal of interdisciplinary work among the professional schools. Now, I wanted to make a brief comment on the history of the white coat that you're about to don. I'm going to go back to more of its original roots. In the 19th century, actually, individuals in the health profession did not wear white. In fact, uh, white was really not a color associated with any aspect of the health profession. And it changed toward the end of the 19th century really as a result of two forces. The first was the application of the scientific method to the study of all health professions. And so your white coat is in fact the lab coat of scientific investigation. And this is why those white lab coats are worn by not only all health professionals, but the PhD, basic scientists, et cetera, that teach you. It is a universal, unifying theme of the health professions. The second was actually an offshoot of that scientific method, that the understanding of the basis, the bacteriologic basis of health and disease, and white was adopted because it was able to basically symbolized sterilization and cleanliness, which was an important part of the transition of all healthcare professions from the middle of the 19th century to the 20th century. So that's really the origin of the white coat, and as you might imagine, it applies equally well to all health professions. And so not surprising today, virtually all medical schools in the United States and in 19 countries of the world, uh, many veterinary schools, nursing schools, physician assistant schools, uh, uh, radiation tech schools all have white coat ceremonies, uh, which basically uh, symbolize uh, your entry into the health profession. Now I do have a little bad news for you. When you put on that white coat today, you won't know a thing more than you did before you put it on. So you don't learn anything more by putting on that white coat. But what you will do when you put on that white coat is you assume a new level of personal responsibility. It will be alluded to by later speakers and already mentioned before. The symbolism of donning the white coat is that you, from the moment you put on the white coat, will not know more about the health profession that you're entering but you will be expected to behave in a professional way, to care about those who have entrusted you with the health of their animals, their pets, uh, with uh, the ability to help not only your immediate clients, but the responsibility that all of us in the health professions have for the larger society that we live in. So I welcome you all to the veterinary profession. I look forward to greeting you four years from now in Lincoln Center when uh, you will graduate. And I hope you have a great four years uh, here at SDU. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Childers and Dr. Oles, for those comments. Uh, Dr. Childers, I did also deal with some pink eye issues when I was growing up on the farm in Minnesota, and I always call the veterinarian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is uh, Neil Olson. Uh, I'm the dean of the School of Veterinary Medicine here at St. George's University, and I'm very happy to be here after 10 years in the same role at the University of Missouri. Um, so it is my pleasure and privilege to welcome you to St. George's University, to our students. Today is your next step along the road to realizing your dream of becoming a veterinarian. Thank you all for being a part of this wonderful event. I want to especially thank all the parents and family members who have helped and nurtured this incoming class of veterinary students. Would you all stand, parents and relatives of our students, and be recognized?
This white coat ceremony is a symbolic representation of your entry into our profession and a demonstration of your commitment to upholding the code of professional conduct expected of medical pro professionals. At St. George's University School of Met Veterinary Medicine, there is no doubt in my mind what our collective job number one is, and that is to educate veterinary students. This always reminds me of a Chinese proverb that I have a favoritism towards. It goes like this, if you are planning for a year, sow rice. If you are planning for a decade, plant trees. And if you are planning for a lifetime, educate people. Our primary role is to prepare students to not only become licensed veterinarians, but to also become leaders in the many facets of career opportunities that our challenging profession offers. I love saying, and I say it as often as I can, it is truly an exciting time to be a veterinarian. It is truly an exciting time to embrace change within our profession. To the graduating class of 2022, I know that sounds a long ways away, but it's not. There are many aspects of becoming a veterinarian you will soon encounter that go beyond the diagnosis and treatment of animal diseases and preventative care. For example, in addition to working with veterinary faculty, you will, especially during your clinical years, interface with clients, referring veterinarians, donors, house officers in the form of interns and residents, and hospital staff, all of whom which play an important role in the functionality of a veterinary practice. I would argue that the veterinary profession is very much a people-oriented profession. Your success as a veterinarian will have more to do with your interactions with people than any other single variable. This reminds me as a phenomenon that is reminiscent of a living, breathing, vibrant, functional organism like yourselves. Actions by all individuals, be they desirable or undesirable, have a rippling effect throughout the profession. So just like life, everything is interconnected. In closing, again, graduating class of 2022, I look forward to greeting you in New York on your graduation day. I look forward to working with you as future alumni as we navigate through the challenges and opportunities that surface in our changing environment. And finally, I will leave you with a quote from Howard Schultz, former president and CEO of Starbucks. Quote, if you don't love what you are doing with an unbridled passion and enthusiasm, you're not going to succeed when you hit obstacles, end of quote. I am sure that you will hit obstacles. We all hit obstacles throughout our career. But I am also very confident that your passion and enthusiasm for our profession will see you through. The experiences you will have at St. George's University will serve to enrich you personally and professionally you have all worked very hard to become veterinary medical students, and I wish you every success as you strive to excel in pursuit of the knowledge, skills, and attributes necessary for your career. Best of luck to you. I congratulate uh, you on reaching this milestone, and I look forward to interacting you, with you extensively in the next six terms. Now it is my distinct pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker. Dr. Ronald Cott. Dr. Cott received his Doctor of Veterinary Medicine degree from the University of Missouri in 1973. For 30 years, he was engaged in a private companion animal practice in Kansas City, Missouri. In 2001, he was appointed Associate Dean for Student and Alumni Affairs in the College of Veterinary Medicine at the University of Missouri. In 2008, he was also, in addition to his existing duties, appointed as Executive Director of Advancement. After more than 30 years of commitment to organized veterinary medicine, which include the local levels, state levels, and national levels, he served in the, in the National House of Delegates of the American Veterinary Medical Association. He has been recognized as the Veterinarian of the Year in the state of Missouri and alumnus of the year by his alma mater. Dr. Cott founded the Veterinary Enrichment Team Building Program at the College of Veterinary Medicine at the University of Missouri. 
students, this is uh, exactly the kind of program that you went through just last week, where, whereas we for, refer to it as PAWS, Professional Attributes Workshop. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Cott with a thunderous round of applause. Good afternoon. After hearing those words of wisdom, I'm not sure I'm going to impart to you too much more wisdom, but I'm going to certainly share some advice and stories, which I'm kind of known for, especially in my student population and my uh, students that have graduated under my uh, associate dean's office. I too grew up on a farm, Dr. Childers. It was a pig farm in Slater, Missouri, and I often experienced the same situation with my dad wanting to do everything himself and or without the veterinarian or the proper equipment. Luckily, we had a veterinarian that finally told him, Kenneth, you can't do it that way. You've got to call me before you start. <laughs> so. I'm very, very flattered to be here. I'm humbled to speak to you. This ceremony means a lot to me because we started this ceremony when I started at the University of Missouri in 2001. It became and still remains probably the largest social and well-attended event, even maybe bigger than graduation at our college. The only difference is you get your white coat when you go into clinics versus at the beginning. I like it this way where you're starting today because it has a real impact on how you start your program. I too want to thank the family, mentors, friends that have helped get these students to this seat today in this auditorium. Most of you have gotten here, let's say by yourself, but there's been a support system to get you here. And those people are very important and will remain important after graduation. Now this is basically to the class of 2022. You're going to complete four very strenuous years of study to earn your doctorate in veterinary medicine. You will be taught by the best and the brightest in our field. You might be training for a job that doesn't even exist today. Your career opportunities are gonna be many and varied. Your future is unlimited. Open every door and walk through them. Now to go a little off course, I want you to sit back and relax because in less than 20 minutes, my allotted speaking time, my goal is to share with you everything you need to know to be successful as a veterinarian and to have everlasting happiness in life. <laughs> I really only wish that was possible. I think every speaker at an event like this would like to think they could accomplish that task. I know I cannot, in a 20-minute speech, accomplish that. So what I'm going to do today is remain light-hearted uh, with some funny stories, sound advice, and hopefully won't put you to sleep. Here's my first quote. If it doesn't challenge you, it won't change you. So I challenge you to remember that statement as I share the rest of my presentation. My former students would tell you I love to tell stories, but I do believe we can learn a lot from each other when we share those stories. A quote which I had heard many times from young people aspiring to be a veterinarian is, I would rather work with animals than with people. <laughs> Being the owner of a companion animal practice for over 30 or nearly 30 years, I never did have a dog write a check for our services. There was always a two-legged owner at the end of the leash to take care of the payment. Now that being said, I want to start my first story. It's about Daisy, a six-month-old normal spay that we uh, performed on a, this young animal. And I instructed the owner to bring Daisy in in two weeks for suture removals. Two weeks to the day, Daisy showed up the door scratching to get in. 
We let her in. She immediately ran back to the uh, exam room that we discharged her from, put her feet up on the table. We went and followed her, putting her on the table, removing the sutures, expecting the owner to walk in in any minute, assuming she had gotten out of the car and just ran to the door. The owner did not come in. So we had to move on to our next appointment. I said, take Daisy down and put her in the kennel, and the owner will be here, I'm sure, very shortly. I noticed in two hours, Daisy was still in her cage, which she went back to the cage that she was in for recovery. She was still there. So I said, told my receptionist, Charlene, will you please call Daisy's owner and tell her she's ready to go home? Daisy's owner was defiant and said, her appointment's not till this afternoon. She's in the backyard. <laughs> no, she's in our cage. She's ready to go home. She eagerly came in to retrieve her pet, a little embarrassed because Daisy had kept better tabs of her appointment than the owner had. <laughs> but even the fact that Daisy came in by herself, she still did not write a check for those services. <laughs> the moral of this story is besides being a service profession, veterinary medicine is also a people profession. Interaction and communication with people will be one of the many variables you will deal with day in and day out. During the 15 years I was associate dean for the college, I would often get phone calls from our alums and associates in the Midwest wanting to hire a new graduate. How many of you think they would give you, me this comment? Ron, I need to hire a new veterinarian. I want the top student in the class who can palpate X number of cattle per hour, spay a dog in five minutes, or diagnose lameness by listening to the gate. What they did ask me to uh, share with them was a student that, I want a new graduate who is a team player, can work with my staff, and can communicate with my clients. It is critical to be well trained as a veterinarian, and you will be. Where your education during the next four years may not fail you, but may not provide you with as much as you need to know is about the topics of communication, servant leadership, emotional intelligence, self-awareness, social awareness, practice management, and on and on. Academia is doing a much better job of putting those in place and getting you exposed to those. But part of your Absorbing that information is your willingness to take the time to become that well-rounded individual that the employers want to hire. You need to become the complete package. To be able to do all of this, you have to learn to share through your communication and your new, this new knowledge that you're getting in a very thorough and thoughtful way so that your teammates and your client, future clients will trust you. Take every chance you have to expand your understanding of the non-technical or the soft skills so that you are the, again, complete package. Here's one of my another stories. I'll call this part A of story two. I have traveled very fortunately over the last eight years with each year 12 of our MU veterinary students to South Africa to do clinical bush work with our South African colleagues. Each reserve, I would ask them, why do you hire these particular individuals to do your work? And I was amazed after eight years, the answer was always the same. We hire Peter and Brendan because we trust them. You must earn your classmates' trust with your teammates' trust and ultimately your clients' trust. And it's built upon the command of your scientific knowledge, but it is also based on your ability to communicate, lead, and work as a team player while sharing this scientific knowledge. To develop trust, there's one ingredient you have to have, and that is integrity. Part B, integrity story. My daughter shared a conversation that she had with her three-year-old daughter, my granddaughter. It goes like this. The daughter says, Mom, what does integrity mean? 
Mom, recognizing a teachable moment, said, well, what do you think it means? Remember this, and I'm not, I think I'm honest on this, that she was just three years old. Very proud of this girl. Daughter says, I think it means doing the right thing even when your mom's not watching. <laughs> Integrity is without a doubt one of the most important attributes you can possess. When you lay your head on your pillow at night, you should be able to go to sleep without worrying because you did the right thing when someone was not watching. Over the next four years, you will experience the highs and lows of advanced education. You will have good days and bad. There will be those exams that were a breeze. Then there will be those where you will wonder, what the hell was that? <laughs> Remember, if it doesn't challenge you, it won't change you. Now, here are my real stories. Sometimes I think I embarrass uh, Dean Olson and probably my wife, too, <laughs> with some of my stories, but here goes. There was a farmer who owned a very old donkey who happened to fall into an old, deep, and dry well. The donkey brayed piteously in his plea for help, but soon became very quiet. The old farmer assumed he had succumbed from the fall to his, due to his frail old age. The farmer called on his neighbors to help him fill the well with dirt, since he assumed the donkey had died and the well needed to be filled up anyway. The farmer and his neighbors began filling the well shovel after shovel with dirt. The donkey, still alive at the bottom of the well, soon realized he, what was happening. He kept feeling the dirt as it hit his back, and he became frantic, thinking this was his demise. As the dirt kept coming, the donkey realized if he simply stepped aside, let the dirt fall to the bottom of the well, he could simply take a step up closer to the top of the well. He patiently continued to shake the dirt off and take a step up, with the donkey's persistence and patience, he was slowly getting closer to the top. Once he got there, he simply stepped out and ran off. Life is going to shovel dirt on you once in a while. The trick to getting out of the hole is to shake it off and to take a step up. Each of our troubles is a stepping stone. We can get out of the deepest of holes and deepest of wells by just stopping, never giving up, shaking it off and taking a step up. As you do this, remember there are five simple rules, and I hold up four fingers, there's five simple rules <laughs> to stay happy. Free your heart from hatred, forgive. Free your mind from worries, most never happen and they run today. Live simply and appreciate what you have, give more and expect less. Now the real end to the story, the donkey, not a very forgiving creature, later came back and bit the farmer. Moral of the story, when you do something wrong and try to cover your ass, it will always come back to bite you. <laughs> Another story. An old man, a boy, and a donkey, a different donkey, <laughs> were going to town. The boy rode the donkey and the old man walked beside him. As they went along, they passed some people who remarked that it was a shame the old man was walking and the boy was riding. The man and the boy thought maybe the critics were right, so they changed positions. Later, they passed another group of people who remarked, what a shame, he makes that little boy walk. Then they decided they both would walk. Soon they passed some more people who thought they were stupid to walk when they had a decent donkey to ride, so they both decided to ride the donkey. Now, of course, they passed the next group of people, and they shamed them because they were putting such a heavy load on the donkey. The old man and the little boy said they were absolutely right, so they decided to carry the donkey. <laughs> As they crossed the bridge, they lost their grip on the donkey, and he fell in the river and drowned. The moral of this story, if you try to please everyone, you might as well kiss your ass goodbye. <laughs> okay, my wife is turning red down here, so I'm going to <laughs> stop. Enough stories and wanting to come to a close, I leave you with this. Reflecting on that very first quote that I gave you, if it doesn't challenge you, it won't change you. Please remember that each day over the next four years, you will experience what I call COTS four C's. Challenge, chance, choice, and change. 
you undoubtedly will have your challenges over the next four years. You will take some chances, but don't jeopardize your integrity. You will make good and bad choices. You will change, which will be the indicator of your growth within our profession. Embrace the four C's, every one of them. They will help you grow and carry you forward. Shake the dirt off and take a step up. I did add one little story here. It's not funny. I'll tell you it's not funny. But several years ago, I got invited. I was the um, chairman for a task force, the AVMA, for the mentoring um, system. I was invited to go to what was called the Veterinary Leadership Experience in Idaho, the VLE. On my flight to the VLE, I happened to pick up the mall magazine, the Sky Mall magazine, in the back of the seat to pass some time. And I went to a page and it had a bracelet in there that says, live with intention. So I go to the VLE and it was, I don't like to call it a life changing experience, but it had a big impact on me as to who I was. And I came home a little bit different after that event because it really opened my eyes as to my, um, who I was as an individual and it's not all about being a veterinarian. So I boarded my return flight and I took my seat I grabbed the mall magazine again, but it fell open exactly to that page. It said, live with intention. I go home, and without the blessings of too many of the uh, administrators, Dean Olson was not there at the time, I went about finding the money to create our own veterinary enrichment and team building program, like he mentioned earlier, called VET. It was started in 2005. The mission for that program was live with intention. Due to that statement, we had the black rubber uh, bracelets created with it printed live with intention on the bracelet. And we have given out thousands of those at the VLE, the VET in Africa. They're seen and being worn across the globe. Just to mention a few of the uh, countries, the United States, Italy, Australia, Japan, Canada, South Africa, and others. If you would like, Take that statement and add it to your personal goals. Live with intention. Now you're soon going to be called doctors. You know we have numerous acronyms and abbreviations in our professions about certifications, board certifications, diseases, uh, protocols that have acronyms and initials. I can't even understand half of them part of the time. But I always wondered what the D and the R really stood for in front of my name. And as I gave this more thought, I honestly think that the D stands for diplomacy, which I think we all need to embrace, but the R has to stand for our resilience because we are resilient people. We can't teach you either one of those attributes. You can and should strive to develop them as you go through your careers. They are critical to your success. Remember the new meaning of the D and the R once you receive that degree in four years. My hat is off to each of you as you move forward, taking care of this great profession, continually making us proud of who you are and what you are doing for the veterinary profession and the world of One Health and One Medicine. A recent quote, I promise you we're getting real close to the end. When you fail, be, be resilient. When you succeed, be humble. When you see others struggling, be compassionate. When you have been helped, be grateful. And today, when you take your first step in your white coat, take a deep breath and enjoy the moment. It is a journey you have been waiting for and the best is yet to come. Congratulations to the class of 2022. Many thanks to all of you taking part in today's ceremony. For those traveling home, be safe, but also be proud of the new journey you helped initiate today. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Cott, for those very inspiring words and for your wonderful stories. Now, based on the recommendations made by the AVMA, SGU School of Veterinary Medicine introduced a professionalism course for the incoming class and its first component, a two-day professional attributes workshop called PAUSE, was recently completed by the students and a slideshow from this year's PAUSE will be shown later in the ceremony. Yes. <laughs> 
Now, it is befitting that after completing this professionalism workshop, you are officially welcomed into the veterinary society. The white coat serves as a symbol of professionalism and to welcome each of you to our veterinary medical profession, SGU SVM will now welcome you with, will now present you, sorry, with a white coat. It symbolizes your entry to the profession and your commitment to uphold the duties of the profession. Robing at the white coat ceremony is considered an honor and it must be pre-approved. To assist the keynote speaker, Dr. Ronald Cott, and myself with robing, I now invite to the stage Dr. Neil Olson, Dean of Veterinary School of Medicine, Dr. Mohamed Bayat, Associate Dean of Students of SVM, Dr. Adria Rodriguez, Assistant Dean of Students, Dr. Chad Tyndall, Director of the SVM Office of Career Guidance, and Dr. Aaron Warners, Professor of Anatomy, Physiology, and Pharmacology Department, at the SVM department as well. In recognition of our interna international enrollment, Dr. Tara Patterson, Associate Professor in the Small Animal Medicine and Surgery Department, will call each student by name and state their country of birth. Please hold your applause until all students have been robed. We know this is not gonna happen. <laughs> for, sa <laughs> for safety, we ask the audience to kindly remain seated and not interrupt the ceremony by taking photos towards the front of the hall. Thank you for your cooperation. Matthew Herringoti, Indiana. <laughs> Monique Petrie, Florida. Toke Kozak, Alberta, Canada. Maxwell Beecroft, Georgia. Scarlett Gallagher, Arizona. Ethan Porter, Utah. Janine Dannenberg, Rhode Island. Lindsay Muse, New Jersey. Logan Steets, Wisconsin. Caroline Earnhardt, North Carolina. Mercedes Cruz, Indiana. Ethan Egley, Ontario, Canada. Kimberly Abreu, Trinidad and Tobago. Luis Garcia, California. Allison Brown, Barbados. Colin Beaton, Ontario, Canada. Kelly Udelsman, Florida. 
Andrew Thompson, Georgia. Brooke Patterson, Florida. Kelly Ennis, Florida. Virginia Glazebrook, South Carolina. Jenna Carlson, New York. Rick Mullis, Indiana. Victoria Phelan, Oklahoma. Emily Johns, Florida. Tristan Hackney, Florida. Joseph and Candela, Louisiana. Lauren Gaddy, Georgia. Susan Wanner, Florida. Rebecca Martin, Texas. Pega Sadagi, Virginia. Eve Indiviglio, New York. Nicole Fennig, Pennsylvania. Haley Embleton, Delaware. Hope Jennings, Delaware. Travis Jackson, Idaho. Lisa Gale, Missouri. Haley Moore, Texas. Linnea Corcoran, Maryland. Cammie Cathy, Missouri. Morgan Gaynor, Tennessee. Lillian Gilbert, New York. Alexandra Baker, New York. Rachel Johnson, Texas. Michael Beckham, Kentucky. Ariana Gonzalez, Texas. Rachel Atkinson, Ontario, Canada.
Kristen Walter, Connecticut. Elizabeth Taylor, New York. Kate Montgomery, Connecticut. Megan O'Brien, California. Lauren McCormick, Oklahoma. Arielle Ferry, Illinois. Chandler Case, Oklahoma. Alyssa Richards, Ohio. Jennifer Collins Hall, New York. Sherry Marie Hines, South Carolina. Sasha Dubrovsky, California. Alexander Sampanas, California. Leah Levinson, Massachusetts. William Reeves, Tennessee. Garrett Mock, South Carolina. Jeffrey Liu, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Corey Zolke, Michigan. Gelmarie Davila, Florida. Maria Fuselov, New York. Jennifer Maldonado Rivera, Puerto Rico. Yuna M, New York. Orit Farahan, Florida. Aaron Mundorf, Massachusetts. Megan Laurie Levitt, Nevada. Parvane Larajani, Pennsylvania. Myrna Metri, California. Chelsea Nahus, Grenada. <laughs> Natasha Weira Rathna, California. Nicole Kizilevich, Massachusetts. Tyler Odin, Alaska. 
April Hall, California. <laughs> Cassidy Novkov, California. <laughs> Rachel Monto, New Jersey. Jennifer Kirk, Massachusetts. Ashley McFrederick, Florida. Jessica Pawlowski, New York. Amanda Ghetto, Ohio. Madison DeRubrio, Rhode Island. Andrea Yorgovan, Illinois. Alexia Estrada, California. Amy Marr, Massachusetts. Caress, sorry, Carice Rios, California. Christina Lunk, Georgia. Emily Ziegler, Texas. Haley Witt, Indiana. Kayla Anderson, New York. Jasmine Alam, California. Jessica Sturms, Illinois, and Tara Walcott, Grenada. Adam Cabrera, Illinois. Laura Bailina, New Jersey. Dominic Mezzanotti, Maryland. Kayla Mochizuki, California. Audrey Dolinger, New York. Christian Small, Florida. Mariah Wilson, Georgia. Justine McKinnon, Virginia. Athanasia Caragionis, New Jersey. Christina Mastromonaco, Quebec, Canada. Victoria 
Zarin, New York. Connor Gallagher, Pennsylvania. Cassandra Martel, Maine. Sarah Wentella, Michigan. Nicole Clark, Pennsylvania. Alyssa Gerbis, Virginia. Welcome and congratulations to the class of 2022. I now invite Dr. Melinda Wilkerson, Professor and Chair of the Pathobiology Department, to lead the students in reciting the professional commitment listed near the back of your program. Please stand, students. <clears throat> Class of 2022. Please join me. Being accepted into the profession of veterinary medicine, I solemnly swear further my knowledge and skills for the benefit of society through the protection of animal health, the relief of animal suffering, the conservation of animal resources, the promotion of public health, and the advancement of medical knowledge. I will conduct my studies judiciously with dignity and keeping the principles of veterinary medical ethics. I accept my responsibility to assist my college achieve our mutual goals. I acknowledge my obligation to hear the university code and conduct myself with integrity in an ethical manner at all times. It is a privilege to have been given the opportunity to become a veterinarian. I will be ever conscious of that privilege and never abuse it. Congratulations, Class of 2022. Thank you, Dr. Wilkerson. Please be seated. As stated earlier, the incoming class has just completed a professional attributes workshop, which we refer to as PAWS. PAWS focuses on the development of those life skills you need besides technical veterinary skills. Skills relating to communication, teamwork, and professionalism. These are skills and attitudes which make you into a more complete and rounded person. A person that is not only technically excellent veterinarian, but is also a successful veterinarian. And to be a successful veterinarian, you need to have excellent people skills, you need to be a responsible member of a team, and you also need to become a servant leader, a leader who supports, cares, and guides the team you will work with, as well as your clients. Without such competencies, especially our ability to relate to and communicate with our clients, we will fail to fulfill our veterinary obligation. 
to be spokespersons for those who cannot speak for themselves, our animal patients, and to use our skills for the benefit of society. The Paul Student Facilitators will now share some of the experience with you through a special presentation.
Louis and Marion Modica Hall. I ask that you please remain seated and keep the aisles clear and wait until you're directed by the ushers to exit. Thank you again so much for coming.